Just another reason to get even more hyped for Tesla's battery day and at the same time be depressed because it's not happening this month and it could be delayed even further than June is the introduction or at least the discussion of the vehicle to grid system. For those of you who don't know, it's been long rumored for a while that one day electric vehicles could start replacing basically Tesla power walls or battery packs that you can install to your house so that houses that have solar panels on them could charge up the car and then once the sun goes down, allow the battery pack in your electric vehicle to power the house. Makes a whole lot of sense considering there's a lot of people willing to buy power walls or generators right now so that they can use electricity on their own without pulling from the grid during peak hours or just to be even more independent from the grid if possible. Instead of buying, you know, some battery packs and strapping them to your garage, why not just tap into the big battery pack you got in your car already? Well, the logic is sound. In an enclosed box environment, sure, it makes sense. But the issue here is it requires a lot more draw on the battery pack of the electric vehicle and also the equipment and infrastructure we have built into electric vehicles currently aren't really built to be outputting that much power. They're just kind of built around inputting a bunch of power to charge up that battery quickly. So a bit of a redesign has to happen on the internal wiring of the vehicle, but an even bigger redesign has to happen to the battery pack, which a lot of people have been alluding to this million mile battery that we're going to be hearing about at Battery Investor Day, which would mean that the battery would not degrade as quickly as it does today. So if Tesla were to try to do a vehicle to grid system, right now, the battery would need to be serviced just like after 100,000 miles of driving the car because you're not just using it when you're driving around, you'd also be using it to charge up the battery during the day when the solar panels are active and drain the battery again when it's pulling from that battery pack. So basically means there's a lot more cycles on the battery, which degrades it faster and batteries in their current state would not be great for that because it could damage the longevity of that vehicle and yeah, resale value of Tesla's would not be good if the battery was below 70% capacity after just 100,000 miles of driving on the road. So they don't want to do that. They want to improve the battery chemistry using a lot of different technologies out there, especially ones that they've acquired from Maxwell, as well as some production techniques that they're going to be getting from CATL, a Chinese company they're working with on next-gen batteries. And the point of this video is not to dive into all the things they could be talking about at Battery Investor Day, but either way, one of the results of having a battery pack that would not need to be serviced for at least the first 1 million miles could mean that you could comfortably have a vehicle to grid system without the battery pack experiencing much degradation and you could still experience that high performance and that high range of that battery pack even if it is powering your house during off-peak hours whenever that may be. The reason it makes a whole lot of sense to do it on the Cybertruck first is it's kind of the next big mainstream product from Tesla that is yet to hit the market right so we've got the sexy lineup those vehicles are out now they're driving on roads people have them and there's a lot of stuff upcoming in Tesla's pipeline but the Cybertruck is the only one that makes sense for a vehicle to grid system because for one Tesla semi is meant for commercial use that's not probably going to be at a lot of people's houses although with the giant battery packs in those things you know if you wanted to have a semi at your house could probably power the entire place for a long time but no that's not the point of the semi at all it's got its own set of problems and the Tesla Roadster of course is like dessert as Elon referred to it it's about performance fun weekend car that people can go really fast on and they're working on the air cannons in the back of that thing they don't want to add unnecessary wiring you know people don't want to spend a bunch of money on a sports car just so that they can power their house with it. Maybe if they find a way to make the extra wiring and the extra output wattage really cheap and easy, I guess maybe they could implement it in the Roadster. But we all know Elon Musk has already said Cybertruck is coming before the Roadster anyway. So this is the next big platform. And given Battery Investor Day is supposed to happen at least in the next three months. Worst case scenario, three months. Please don't be that long. But I imagine Tesla wants to implement these next generation batteries into the Cybertruck so that the cost stays low and they can achieve those low price points they unveiled for the Cybertruck and also achieve that amazing range because the next generation Tesla battery we've been hearing so much about is kind of combating all battery issues at the same time. For one, it's supposed to last a lot longer, so that's how you get to your 1 million miles. For two, it's supposed to be cheaper to manufacture at scale, so you're getting below $100 per kilowatt hour, meaning you can put a very large battery pack in the Cybertruck, get a 500 mile range, and still only charge $70,000 for the vehicle. And for three, the efficiency of these batteries and how they're able to lay them on the inside of the battery packs could result in longer range overall. Even if you didn't have the cost saving factor there, it would just result in longer range. So a whole bunch of mysteries 
at Battery Investor Day that I'm hoping they clear up soon, but vehicle to grid technology, I think would be an exciting one. As more and more people are installing solar panels on their houses, Tesla's pushing the solar roof so heavily everywhere on their website. And anytime you buy a Tesla, they're like, wouldn't you also want a way to, you know, generate electricity for free at your house? So they're making solar really, really affordable. The fact that you can rent solar panels for as little as $65 a month and there's no installation fees and there's no cancellation fees. So if you cancel, they'll just take the solar panels back. But a huge advantage to having solar is if you have your own battery storage on site, because that means you can almost completely disconnect from the grid because you harness the power during the day. And if you use it during the night, you can just draw off those batteries. And the Powerwall battery packs are nowhere near as large as the battery packs that you would find in something like a Cybertruck. So given this is a large vehicle and it's built around being, you know, utility based, and there's probably a lot more room on the inside for them to stuff those wires in case they wanted to make a vehicle to grid system that could actually output enough power to provide electricity to an entire household. Cybertruck is the vehicle to do it on and they don't have to worry too much about swapping out battery cells because obviously the Cybertruck assembly line and Gigafactory has not been built yet. So they get to start from fresh with the Cybertruck and hopefully implement these new Tesla battery cells. And it's also a win for the environment because people get to take advantage of that battery pack and use it for all the electricity in their house instead of, you know, just having the car sit in the garage all day. So it makes a whole lot of sense as to why they would want to do this. It supports their ideology of wanting to be accelerating our dependence on sustainable energy. And it may impact the sales of the Tesla Powerwall a little bit, but I imagine they could upcharge the vehicle to grid system a lot as an add-on at checkout and they could still profit off of it in that way a little bit. But probably you would see that on the Cybertruck before you see it on anything else given other than the semi, it's the largest electric vehicle Tesla has ever produced. What are your guys' thoughts on the vehicle to grid system? Would you like to do that for your EV if it was capable one day? Feel free to hit me up over on Twitter, join my Discord, and we can chat more about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.